you want a more realistic and enhanced cockpit but put off by what seems to be an exorbitant cost to get there? Well today I'm featuring an application I've featured on this channel before, Simbox. And it's recently been updated with even more features and functions and allows you to move your controls to a tablet or mobile device. For selected aircraft, you can pop out to your tablet or mobile device the FMC, FMS or MacDo. It's from developer Flying Art. And in this video, we're going to focus just on what's different and what's changed. If you're interested in one or more in-depth analysis, well, check out my previous video, link in the notes below. It features also an enhanced GA config including the G1000 and the option to create your own profiles if one doesn't exist. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. Your company is always appreciated. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. The range of aircraft covered has been expanded and now includes the ATR4272, a Sobo 787, one of my favorites, the CRJ and it's the complete series, Phoenix A320 of course, those are all for Microsoft Flight Simulator, but it also features Explain products. This is a payware application, although there is a free trial. It's a one-off payment, no subs here. And for what you get, well, I think it's value for money. These things are difficult to film. The insert is my actual tablet. I'm in the CRJ-700, and as you can see, the profile's automatically changed in Simbox, as it's available by default. And as mentioned earlier, we're only going to be looking at what's new. First off, it gives you access to the AIP map, as well as some general aircraft information such as altitude, etc. Access to Open AIP is free, although you do need to register an account. It does not natively support Navigraph functionality at this time. But what it does feature is full SimBrief integration. If I select Fetch, it will bring up my latest flight plan which is from Madeira to Gibraltar, my route is shown, as well as a host of other information such as payload, the prevailing weather conditions, as well as the raw SimBrief document. This is very handy, especially for something like the CRJ, where you need to use the Navigraph SimBrief downloader to get it into the aircraft. Another new feature is you can quickly and easily change the sim rate and pause the sim directly from your mobile device the functionality of the radios I have shown in my previous video and it features the virtual knob so it's easy to adjust just touch the selected item you want however right now it features a new function called gestures and this offers you another option of the way to change various figures you don't have to use the virtual knobs place and hold your finger at the top or the bottom of the selected thing you want to change and then drag your finger the further away you get, the faster it changes and so on. And of course any changes you're doing is being represented in the aircraft simultaneously. There's next to no lag at all. It did seem to switch channels when I touched it initially. I can also change the decimal figures by touching up top and swipe my finger as shown. It's a nice feature but I did find it a little bit iffy at times. I found the virtual wheels much easier to use. But that's just me. Personally, I prefer to have gestures off. It has all the usual suspects such as landing gear, lights and so on. For any of the featured aircraft, such as the ATR-42 CRJ, it features a bespoke autopilot, which makes it very easy to get to grips with. I've engaged the autopilot and we can see it's been engaged in the aircraft. Here I've selected the speed so the virtual knob has come up as I move the virtual knob left or right, so the speed indicator is changing on the PFD. What's very impressive is there appears to be almost, well, next to no latency at all. Now selected heading, and again just by swiping my figure I'm able to change the heading. And we can see the indicator changing on the MFD. In my previous video we focused on PMDG 737-700 and how to pop out the FMC the method hasn't changed and I'm just doing that now for the uh, CRJ. It's relatively quick and easy and the impact on your frame rate's not too bad but of course that'll be subject to how many panels you pop out. But this is not new. What I wanted to show you was a very cool feature that the developer Arta Flying Art has added. 
using the SimBrief downloader by the way I'm just entering in the route so that my flight plan will auto load once again you can see how quick it reacts how little latency there is but this is what I wanted to show you with the MacDo showing on my pop-out panel I can select any one of the other categories hold my finger on it for a second or two and voila you have a split screen this is extremely useful no longer having to zoom into the cockpit fiddle about with your mouse it's all there right in front of you I've now changed the split screen and brought up the autopilot perfect for those takeoffs another new feature which you may have noticed is there are push and pull buttons depending on the configuration that you're using particularly useful when simulating Airbus type controls and this just makes everything again much much easier let's now turn to GA I'm in the default C172 and from the list of profiles available I selected GA with the G1000 and as demonstrated previously I simply popped out the panel onto my tablet and you can do this for either one of the G1000 panels I don't want that menu showing so if I just hold it with my finger the menu bar disappears I've selected heading and it's highlighted on the tablet and I can now use the virtual knob to change the heading and as I do on the PFD within the aircraft you can see the heading bug changing accordingly and we can do exactly the same thing with altitude I noted post recording that I hadn't fitted the window in perfectly as the labels for the soft keys at the bottom weren't showing but this would just be a matter of resizing the window to make it fit for altitude I've got two vertical knobs one changes it in thousands and the other one changes it in hundreds swipe left to increase right to decrease we can also try the barrow setting once again it's highlighted and I'm able to change the barometer setting although only the bottom virtual knobs seem to be functioning this may have been because I've been loading multiple profiles in one session now just testing out the autopilot autopilot on that's showing on the PFD heading now on yes that seems to be functioning perfectly okay we can turn those off now let's test out the range function something you use quite often when you're flying press it so it's highlighted virtual knob appears and now rotate it but it's not working ah oh, that's because I've got the wrong panel let me revert back to the HSI change the HSI to display the map now let's give it a try yes it's working and now I can zoom in and out on the PFD this updated version of Simbox also has the ability to create a virtual display and within that virtual display you can drag and drop various different panels and position as you like just a warning though it does tank your FPS I tried it pulled out three panels and my FPS was cut in half so a warning there but I suggest that would be the case with almost any application in my personal view well Simbox is a great application that's very affordable simply because most of us well we do have the odd tablet or mobile device or even a laptop laying around being underutilized regrettably it's not Xbox compatible at this time as mentioned earlier there is a free but very limited trial and it's worth a look thank you very much for being with me today I hope you found it useful and informative stay well look after yourselves I'll see you all again very soon and ciao for now